In the last couple of classes, as well as tonight's class, we've been trying to understand when Shabbat ends, when Yom Kippur ends, when fasts end, when is Ben Hashimah short, what is this time of Rabbi Nutam, what is the time of the Geonim, why can't we put our finger on it, why is it always an issue, you know, this rabbi says this, and this synagogue says that, and in this community they do this, and that community they do that, and it's always, you know, some sort of difference. And I remember in the Middle East we did this, and this, you know, even from country to country, city to city, everybody has different recollections. And with what we've studied, we've definitely seen that the common notion that we hear of today of a time of a binu time of 72 minutes is definitely something that was never known. Um, it's something that even in the last century was unknown even outside of the Middle East, except among small pockets of Hasidim, it seems like. And it only started to become popular among Seferadim and Eris Israel, and from there to places outside of Eretz Yisrael, let's say in the last three to four decades. Prior to that, completely unknown, non-adhered to, non-followed, um, not even an option. And another issue is that the Hachamim didn't really write about this topic in the same way that they wrote about other topics because it was just a given. You went outside, you saw the stars. And now that we have so much light pollution and we live in a world of uh, atomic clocks and such precision in time, we don't know how to think in a manner of, you know, a few minutes more, a few minutes less, we'll just hang out, we'll wait, we'll look outside. You know, our mindset doesn't work the same way that the mind of the human being worked for centuries, millennium even. And so how do we learn about this topic? This topic really comes to light to us, usually in the form of the response of the Hachamim, She'elot Chubot, that deal with a child that is born usually on Friday night after sunset, but possibly before it's really dark outside. This time period called Ben Hashem Ashot, okay, between the suns, if you will. And what is that time? How long is that time? How long of a period of time does a person, you know, have in, that we don't know whether it's still considered Friday, it's considered Sunday, and because it can't be this or that, it had, the Mila would automatically get pushed off to Sunday instead of being on Friday or on Saturday. And that's how a lot of the information comes to us. And therefore, when we looked at the Teshubah of Hacham David Shilush, we looked at Hamda Genuza, Helek Gimel, Volume 3, Simman Tet Zayin. Okay, in the section of question and answer number 16. But this is not the only place where Rabbi Shalush discusses this. In the previous volume, in volume 2, he has a much lengthier tishuba. In fact, he has two tishubot on the subject. And one is Siman Lam Midbet, number 32, titled Birur Zeman Ben Hashem Ashot, a clarification of the time of Ben Hashem Ashot. And then a follow-up tishuba, Siman Lam Midgimel, Number 33, How many minutes to walk a meal? And in these two responses, he really deals with a lot of the issues that we wanted to look at, but we didn't have a chance because it's really very, very difficult and terse to get into so much detail to cover you know, pages upon pages. We said Rabbi Zaini has 70 pages on the subject. Rabbi Barda has another 50 pages. Rabbi Shilush has another 45 pages or so. And this is something we could study, you know, over the course of a year possibly. But obviously we'll lose one another. So we need to understand the general conclusions. 
Rabbi Barda proves that what is commonly known as the time of Ben Hashem Ashot of Rabbi Utam is 72 minutes is a misnomer, it's a misnotion, it's a misunderstanding of Rabbi Utam. Uh, Rabbi Eliyahu Zaini, he proves it as well, but through different proofs and different sources and a much more detailed investigation of more unknown, if you will, texts that have come to light through research, through archival material in libraries through original manuscripts of Hachamim that weren't readily available even 20 years ago. Rabbi Shilush looks at it on a different level. He's saying, let's assume that this concept of Rabbeinu Tam in 72 minutes is correct. He just doesn't even accept it. He throws it out the door. And I always want to read a couple of small sections from Rabbi Shalush and what he says. So in volume two of Hamdag in Uzzah, Siman Lamidbet, he starts with Birur Zeman Bin Hashem Ashot, clarification of the time of Bin Hashem Ashot. And let me read to you what he says. He says, Ra'iti met Hasadim Bedo Yorezi. Because I have seen people that have become super pious in this generation, this generation where we're falling, okay? Everybody is becoming less and less pious, but all of a sudden we have these people that are super pious. And they're beginning to follow a custom according to the opinion of Rabbi Utam, for when Shabbat exits, as was taught to them by their teachers. And I stand here bewildered. What's going on? Because he goes, what's going on? Because my very rabbis, okay, my forefathers, my rabbis, their teachers, their rabbis, their fathers, they were all great sadiqim, they were all pure, okay? Just in the generation before us, not a long time ago, that their little finger, they're pinky in its wisdom, in its purity, in its spirituality, in its righteousness, was much wider in girth than this person's entire waist. They knew the opinion of Rabbi Utam, and they knew the ruling of Shohan Aruch, and nevertheless, they did not do things that way. They followed the custom to make Habdallah when they saw three medium stars. And in all of the country of Israel, they follow like the custom of Yerushalayim. 40 minutes after sunset. Not like Rabbi Utam. And since these great hachamim, our forefathers, who were extra scrupulous in everything, even the most minute details of the Torah, they didn't even consider being stringent like this reasoning of Rabbi Utam. Even when it came to the issue of Shabbat, which is a very stringent and strict subject, they definitely looked into his opinion, they looked into his reasoning, they looked at the sources that talk about Rabbi Utam, and they found no reason to find this way 
of Rabbeinu Tam to be compelling whatsoever. V'chevan shirub kechul b'nei Yisrael ha-shomrim Shabbat enam nohagim k'shitat Rabbeinu Tam and since the majority of the Jews who observe the Shabbat do not follow the ruling of Rabbeinu Tam siman hu shigam b'shamayim hiskimu you heard that? It's a sign that Shagam Bashamayim is Kimu, that even from the heavens they have agreed, She'en Halacha Kimoto, that the Halacha is not like the common notion of the reasoning of Rabbin Utam in the time of Rabbin Utam. Kifi Sheir Hapti had Devarim Besefri Hamdagin Uza, Be'en Kamakum Narich. Like I have expanded the topic at length in my book Hamdag in Uzak because he also talks about this issue in Halik Rishon when he deals with other issues. Because therefore I said I have to look into this subject so I can completely clarify it from every angle to make sure that we go into the depths of it and understand it fully. And this is how he opens up the subject and how he gets into it, to understand what is the subject, what is the opinion of all the hachamim from the beginning of time, as early back as you go from the Gemara, all the way to Rabbin Utam and to everybody until his very rabbis. And he saw, bottom line, he said, this is not... The accepted position, not of the Gemara, not of the Rishonim, not of the Aharonim. And he says, we have no reason to follow it, because if we do follow it as well, and we say that he's the correct one, that means we are calling all of our rabbis, and all of our fathers and grandfathers, and everybody for hundreds of years, all Nehalele Shabbat. They all transgressed the Shabbat, because they ended Shabbat too early. And here we are, we all of a sudden, we know better than all of these hundreds and hundreds of years of the greatest hachamim. So obviously he tells us that this is not what we do. And he goes on and on to discuss it, and he discusses it at length, like I said, in different areas in volume 1 of Hamdag and Uzzah, in two lengthy Teshuvot in volume 2, in a Teshuvah in volume 3. He, volume 3, he even goes through the opinion of Rabbi Ben Sion Abba Sha'ul, where he says, oh, well, there's a standard of 25 to 28 minutes, which is usually 27 minutes, because that's when we see the stars, and he proves how that is wrong as well, and there's a way to calculate when you see the stars based upon what we have from Harambam, because the seeing of the stars has to work with the amount of time it takes to walk the meal, and he goes through all of it. And based upon everything we see here, we know that the time of ending Shabbat is not like Rabbi Nutam. From what we're continuing to look into, it seems that because of different locales around the world, based upon the location, based upon longitude and latitude, it has to be based upon the amount of degrees that the sun is below the western horizon and based upon that we can calculate when the stars are out that we could see them unfortunately we're not in positions where we can see the stars but it would seem so far so far and i'm not you know signing off on this yet that most probably the time is 8.5 degrees uh, when the sun is 8.5 degrees below the western horizon. So it seems so far. It may be a little bit more, a little bit less, and we're trying to clarify that more. And obviously, when we have something more concrete, we'll come back with it. Please enjoy this class that we have, and I look forward to hearing your questions, your concerns, and to clarify this concept in this matter more and more. School of Mizvot, let's keep learning, studying Torah, so we could put it into practice. Thank you. Wednesday night, November 11th, 2020. The last couple of classes, we dealt with the issue of when does the day end, according to the Hachamim, according to what is perceived today as being 
the time of Rabbeinu Tam. And we looked at various opinions and approaches from Rabbi Barda, from Rabbi Zaini. We saw the opinion of Rabbi Herzog. We saw how other Hachamim and Rabbanim deal with the issue. And I was going to leave the issue alone, but I remembered this evening a interesting teshuva by Hacham David Shilush, Shalom, where he deals with the topic of a baby boy that is born during this period of Ben Hashem Ashot, between sunset and when it actually becomes night. And if a child is born on Friday night during that small period of time, there is a question in Halakha, when is the Mila? If he's actually born when it is prior to Shabbat, prior to sunset rather, then the Mila would be on Friday. If he's born when it's already definitely nighttime on Friday night, then the Mila would actually be on Shabbat. We are Mahalil Shabbat for the Mila. But if the child is born during Ben Hashem Ashot, during the small win window of time between uh, sunset and when we'll call the stars come out, when it becomes nighttime, then the Mila has to get pushed off till Sunday. So I want to look at Hacham David Shilush's Teshuba. You have it in front of you. It came to you as a PDF. And we're going to see how he deals with this issue and how he ends up ruling. What time period, what time frame does he determine is the correct time? And why, if anything at all, why do we hold a different time when it comes to the end of Shabbat or Kippur? So we're on the bottom of page, Samach Aleph. This is in his Hamda Genuza. Volume 3, the bottom of page 61, it starts in Mantet Zayin. No lad be Arab Shabbat, a harshik yad a hamma matayim molu utu. Okay, a child that is born on Arab Shabbat after sunset, when is the Mila? Tino, Kshino lad be Arab Shabbat, a harshik yad a hamma meha ofak. Kodam shinir ushal ushako khabim benonim, matayim molu utu. So once we know the sun has descended below the horizon and we still have not seen three stars. When would the Mila for such a child be? Tishuba, right away in true style, Hacham David Shalush goes to the Radbaz, Rabbi David ibn Abi Zimra. Rabbi David ibn Abi Zimra, as we've mentioned in many classes in the past, was born in Spain. He was already a considered a very, very worthy Hacham in Spain. He left at the time of the expulsion from Spain, 1492, he ended up going to, to Egypt. Towards the very end of his life, he went to Safed. And he wrote thousands of Tishubot, as we know. And he was very well was respected throughout the world during his time. And until today, his works are studied. So the Radbaz has a Tishuba, Siman Resh Pehet, Katab. Very, very clear that it is super clear. And it also clarifies the issue of Rabbeinu Tam and the Tosafot. He tells you, if we know for sure that this child was born, listen carefully, between the beginning of the Shiki'a and the end of the Shiki'a. Now you're going to wonder, what's the beginning of the Shiki'a and what's the end of the Shiki'a if you weren't in previous classes? But if you were in previous classes, you listen to the previous classes, we know now that the beginning of the Shiki'a is when the sun begins to descend, and that's the Pelig, the time of the Pelig, which is approximately an hour and a quarter before actual sunset. So he's telling you, if this child was born from the beginning of the Shiki'a till the end of the Shiki'a, he tells you, Pashut. It's simple. 
is one more his Mila is when? On the eighth day. So that would be Friday because he was born during the day. And this is, follows in line with the Tosafot in two places. And the Tosafot of the and the Bin Utam, keep that in mind. And the Ramban and the Ran and the Semag, the Murdechi and the Rosh, etc. etc. So it's very, very clear that all these great Rishonim are all on the same page of when is the beginning of the Shiki'a and the end of the Shiki'a. And this one statement alone by the Radbaz should completely dispel the mistaken notion that according to Rabbeinu Tam, there is another Shiki'a that happens after what we know as sunset and then automatically pushing the end of the day till after 72 minutes after sunset. This opinion of the Radbaz and all the Rishonim completely pushed that away and is now lo no longer a concept. Now, what do we have to examine carefully? So what do we have to be careful? We have to make sure and make sure there's no doubt that the child was born before the end of the shikia, before the end of sunset, what we know as sunset. Or a house of a shikia, but he was born after the end of sunset, before the time period that we saw three stars. Now he's born in that window, as I gave in the intro. You now you would think that person that is born in this quasi time where it's not day and not night, okay, because of safek sefeka, because of this double doubt, you would think he would be born on the eighth day, which would be Friday, Yom Shishi. Safek no that called him Sofashki Ashi Yomhu. Okay, doubt number one is we're unsure if he was born before the end of Shikia when it is daytime. Okay, maybe this period between sunset and when the stars come out is called Ben Hashem Ashot. Okay, and so maybe this is a Safek time, so maybe it's Safek Yom, maybe it's Safek Laila. But since we have Safek, he was born during the day, Safek of this, so we have two Safeks that it could have been during the day, so you make the Mila on Friday. So one would think. Obviously, this is not the halakha. Okay, but now he shows you how that's not the case. There's different safikot here, other doubts. So, Safik, if it's the daytime, and this would have ramifications, actual practical ramifications dealing with Musa Shabbat. Now, maybe it's all night, and that would affect Arab Shabbat. Well, the issue of a Zab, a person. Okay, who lets forth an emission during Ben Hashemashot? If he let forth this emission, okay, when would he have to go to the mikveh? Okay. You could even go into a double safik that pushes you all the way forward to the 10th day. So the Yom Shabbat now is going to be considered the 8th day if he's born at night. Okay? And then Sunday is the 9th day. Monday is the 10th day. If we're looking at Friday as being the 8th day, Sunday becomes the 10th day. Okay? And the that could be then. About the Mimola Shimini, Shimeme Hosef Zemanhu. Okay, but maybe if you end up do, doing the Mila on the eighth day, you cut the time period short and he wasn't actually 
having his mila eight days after birth. How would you look at it again? He tells you. Okay. Versus the doubt if it was Ben Shemashot. It's a doubt whether it's a day. If Ben Shemashot, this time, Ben Shemashot, again, between the Shemashot, between the different Shemish. Remember, the, the Shemish, the sun, is a star, and the stars that we see later on are stars. So even though they're stars, they're Kochabim, they are Shemashot, okay? And they work in a process of Shemush. They help to give light. So they're like Shemashim. You have the Shemash, when you write, when you light Hanukkah, you have a Shemash to give you that light, to guide you. You have a Shemash, the guy who works in the Bet Knesset, to help to guide you. So this is the Ben HaShemashot, between the different Shemashot, okay? Between the different helpers, okay? The helpers in this case are those that are giving you the light for the day or the light for the night. But now, maybe we can't take it into the equation and we have to be mahmir. Why? Maybe it's all night. Maybe it's a little bit of this, maybe it's a little bit of that. Maybe it's a different day completely. What we call the twilight zone. This is the twilight, okay? Okay. And therefore, you would end up having to push the Mila off to the 10th. And this technically is correct, and it's very, very sharp. Now we have a doubt as to when he was born. If we're unsure when he was born, that means we also are unsure that we are not com compliant with the shi'urim, with the time frames set for us by the hachamim. When the sun is still at the head of the palm trees, it's daytime. And from then on, it goes into Ben HaShemashot to remove us from any sort of doubt and we uh, practice in reality to be mahmir and the mila becomes on the 10th day and this is the words of the radbaz not of anybody else so to put it simply if a child is born on Friday night the Mila is not on Friday. The Mila is not on Shabbat. The Mila gets pushed off to Sunday. Sunday being the 10th day. Eighth day was Friday. Ninth day Shabbat. Tenth day being Sunday. Now, Da'ato Kirabinu Tam Shahar Shikiat Agulat Shemish Ad so let's see what he's telling you over here. He's telling us the opinion, okay, is like that of Rabbin Uta, meaning what? After the descending of the sphere of the sun, until 54 minutes later, it's still daytime. And that's when Ben Hashemashot begins, which is 18 minutes. Now you have a completion of 54 and 18. That is your 72 minutes from the Shekiah. As and that's when the, the night begins. As we will explain, and also he has another tissue bag where he deals with another subject that's connected to this in his volume two. Hashohana Ruch Yuri the Ayah Khutmila Bishimanri Samakbe Samakvav. 
לא כתב מתי הוא זמן בין המאשות, ולהסתמך על מה שכתב בלכות שבת סימן נס המחה ולסימן נס המחה גימל, לסד גימל, שפסה כרבנו תם. האם בשביל לאבד לעיל או תותל כבד ועוד ל"ז אין כאן מקום להאריך. אז אם הוא אומר שולחן ערוך, הוא אומר שולחן ערוך להגיד לנו When is the time of Ben Hashem Ashot for a child that's born Ben Hashem Ashot? But the Shohan Aruch never told us anything. He automatically assumed that you would have read Hilchot Shabbat, and based upon what he wrote in Hilchot Shabbat, you would figure out how to extrapolate the time, the halakha over there, to use it for when a child is born. But this is not the place to dwell on that. What is the word of 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 the word? So he's telling us now, what the Radbaz is telling us is that we have two sides over here to be mahmir. So this is a very, very odd way of writing and an odd type of approach to halakha, especially in the style of the Radbaz. The Radbaz style is very, very cut, dry. You know, he gets to the point right away. He doesn't leave us with any sort of questions. Tell you, hasafik ahalon, the last safik, the last doubt that we have, יש בו גם כן שני סדדים להקל, because there's also, if there's two ways to look at it to be stringent, there's also two ways to look at it to be lenient. ספק כולו מן היום, you could say, no, it's all daytime. Until we see dark outside, we could say it's all day. ואם אתם רוצים לומר, אין כולו מן היום, ספק יש בו בשלהם, and we could say, okay, so it could be part day, part night. So we could take all the day, and we could look at it as to be lenient. ולמה בספק נולד לפני בן השם השעות, ספק נולד לבן השם השעות, לא ימות באותו יום, משום ספק ספקה. Why look at it this way and that way? ספק נולד ביום, שלא אמר בן השם השעות, אולי בן השם השעות יום, ואפילו אם כל דקה ממנה, חסייה היום וחסייה הלילה, אולי אותו זמן שיעשה רוב הראש הקובע שעת לידה הוא יום, וספק ספקה, בכל התורה מהנה וכן משבת. So maybe the time when the child's head came out, okay, that could have been at the time when it was lighter outside instead of darker outside. And we know we determine when a child is born from when the head comes out. So we could say, okay, the head came out when it was more day, when it was more daytime, more daytime natural light from the sun. Okay, and we could say, okay, the child is there. You know, we don't have to look at it as this twilight quasi time that we're unsure, not this, not that. So this is a question that Rabbi Shalush is throwing at us to keep our minds active. This is part of his style. Now he goes on to a very, or rather he goes on to a, another very famous teshuba in the topic of Ben Hashem Ashot. And before I continue, I also want to mention that these two teshuvot, the one that we just saw, the, a section from, from the Radbaz, and the one we're going to look to uh, from, what do you call it? Rabbi El Ashkar, okay? were also both brought in the very lengthy piece that we didn't read through of Rabbi Zaini, because Rabbi Zaini's piece was about 70 pages. So obviously, do a tissue like that, we're going to be dealing with it all year. So he's also quoting a section from that. So it tells you, Maharash al-Ashqar, he was one of the great hachimim of Safed, by the way. Okay, so early on, he is one of the hachamim that made it his business to write at length and to dispel the myth of two sunsets as people began, came to believe from the writing of Ibn Utam. כי משל שקע חמה בדין מלאכו, וכל בין השמשות מטילים לחומרה לשני ימים. שאם נולד בסוף ערב שבת מטילים אותו לחומרה שהוא בשבת ואין לנו ללמוד בערב שבת. ומטילים אותו לחומרה שהוא בערב שבת ואין שבת שמיני עד כאן. ומה שכתבתם, נו יאמר לנו דלה יהודו לבין אותם, שזה הפקעתה נהיה נמוד יום שישי ממה שכתב הרמב״ם, ודנים בו להחמיר וחשבינה ליום. لا ابن التاهي بعد رباه ده هاي حمراء قولا شبي بها ربانا شكادو بفيروش فاهي ده رمبام تمون عروخو ومتلين وطولة حمراء ومشبات أمنينان ولا بين شماشوت من مولة الشعي مدل سفتاء لمجلة 
امرینان دماحرین بیدا لقدمین بدبارین پشوتیم هم که لالا دملتا دهای نکا این ملین و تو الا عاجم لشور So it's very, very clear. Because there shouldn't be any sort of question. If we're looking at Arab Shabbat, we know once the sun sets, we automatically separate from any sort of melacha. If we start separate from melacha from sunset, we know that that time period of Bina Shema Short, we use it as a humra. It automatically is a time period that we are acting stringently, okay? Stringently on Friday, if it's Friday, and stringently on Shabbat, if it's Shabbat. Because if he was born at the end, on Arab Shabbat, matilin oto l'humra. Okay, we look at it once again like the humra, shuba Shabbat. Shabbat. So we say then, it's already past sunset. There's no way we could have the milah now on Friday, on Arab Shabbat. But then if it's Shabbat, we say, but maybe it's not Shabbat. Maybe it has to be the Humrah of it being Arab Shabbat. Okay? Because we can't be Mahalil Shabbat if something happened when it's not really Shabbat. If that's the case, we take the Humrot of both scenarios. Okay? And it cannot be done on Friday. It cannot be done on Shabbat. And it automatically gets pushed off as the rabbi concludes the paragraph. Very, very clear. He simplified what the Radbaz told us until now. Okay, we're starting section three now. Okay. Harab ben Sion Abba Shaul, Bisifro Ol Sion. The beauty of. Rabbi Shalush, he also quotes his contemporaries and those younger than him and those that he generally doesn't even agree with necessarily. He quotes them as well. That way, the Torah is dealt with in a very honest fashion. Harab ben Sion Abba Shaul, besifro ol Sion. Yore di Asim man yod. Odot tinok shinolad ahara shiki'a imatai Dino kinola benashima shosh to him mila to katab. Right? So he, all the hachamim deal with a similar question as to when the mila is. He goes, Yes, sobrim. There are those that reason. Okay? And Rabbi Shalush puts in parentheses over here. I don't know who those people are, but let's see what Rabbi, Shil, what Rabbi Abba Shaul has to say. He tells you, Yes, sobrim. There are those that reason. Im no lad ad 13 the kod vahaisi. من الشكيعة حشيب كنولاد بيوم بنيمول للشمونة ذهبي سفيك سفيكا If a child is born after sunset on Friday during a period of 13 of up to 13 and a half minutes this child has his mila on the eighth day being Friday. Right? Hashim Kinola by Yom, Minimol Shimona, Friday. They have a suffix if a car. Savik Halaha Kerbin Uta, be who Yom would die, where I'm to sell Oma the Halaha Kerguonim, she who been a Shamashot, Hare been a Shamashot, who suffix Yom, Minimol Shimona, Benim Nola, be Yom Shishi, Obemus Eshabad, be Oto Zeman. Okay, now obviously Rabbi Shalush is very troubled by this because this really flies in the face of what we just saw from the Radbaz and from Maram al-Ashkar. Now, how are you going to look at Hachamim from 500 years ago and slap them in the face and say, no, I'm not listening to you. I'm going to do my own thing. Then the way Rabbi Abba Shaul is looking at it, he's telling you if he's born after 13 and a half minutes, we have only one sefik, not two sefikot, one sefik, one doubt. We have one doubt if we're looking at it in the style of Rabbi Utam, because according to Rabbi Utam, the way Rabbi Abba Shaul understands him is that technically it's still daytime. And if you look at it in the way of the Geonim, 
after 13 and a half minutes, it's definitely nighttime. So it's either daytime according to the Binutam or it's nighttime according to the Gi'onim. So that being the case, does the Mila happen on Shabbat or does it get pushed off to Sunday? Thirteen oh, thirteen point five. That it really depends who you follow. If you follow the Geonim of 13 and a half minutes, or you follow the opinion of the Tosafot of Ibn Utam of 72 minutes. So if you follow 13 and a half minutes, 13 and a half minutes now becomes Vadai Shabbat, and the Mila would be on Shabbat. But if you follow Ibn Utam, you have to wait 72 minutes after what we know as sunset, and only then does it become definitely Shabbat. And if the child is born at that time, then the Mila is on Shabbat. So this is the two ways that Rabbi Ben Shana is looking at it, and it really leaves you with a problem. Let's say the child is born between that 13 and a half mark and the 72 minute mark, and you're not sure what to be following because you're going to the rabbi. And what you do, the ma'aseh, and what that rabbi does, the ma'aseh, may be completely different. And maybe neither one follows with the accepted practice of the hachamim of the city that you're in. Continue again. Ulam haminhag de la kahada mehashitot in the scale of the ail, mehashitot in the scale of the ail, ella mehashiki a ad asrim vesheva the court hashiv safek. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, we'll get back to that in a second. So now, what does he tell you over here, the rabbi? He's telling us. He goes, all this on paper is very interesting, but it doesn't really work with reality. He said, let's be realistic. And I wish everybody was here. I don't see uh, David Bateshi. I don't see Rabbi Kasorla here. I'm guessing Joey and Barry in the background there. In any case. I'm here. I'm in the background. Good. So listen what, what Rabbi Shalush is telling us. He's telling you what Rabbi Ben Siyon Abba Shaul is saying doesn't really fit in with anything. He's telling you the minhag, the custom, the practice, okay, is not like either one of these opinions that Rabbi Ben Siyon Abba Shaul brought us. Rather, from Shikia, from sunset, what we see as sunset, until 27 minutes after sunset, is considered safik. Okay, we're not sure if it's day or night. Okay, or rather, we're not sure if it's night yet to consider it Shabbat. The Mol Tishi'i and the Mila would then be pushed off the Tishi'i with the Asiri. In other words, we get pushed off to Sunday. When it is Aniudati, and why do I come and try to tell us to justify the minhag and complete and uh, 
continue to follow the practice because we're not concerned. We don't take Rabbinu Tam into consideration when we do things. Why? Because the Geonim never agreed with Rabbinu Tam and we always had the Geonim way before Rabbinu Tam. And it be also because it seems that the opinion of the Geonim is also the opinion of Harambam. So if we have the Geonim and we have the Rambam, then we do not consider Rabbinu Tam. And more so, even somebody who follows Rabbinu Tam, they only follow Rabbinu Tam when they want to be stringent, when they, they want to be, you know, much more adamant about pushing off Shabbat later because they want to keep the Shabbat. Okay, so they use it to be stringent. But they don't do it to be lenient, to say, okay, yes, the sun set now, but I'm in this period on, let's say, on a Friday night, and it's after sunset, and I have up to 72 minutes, I can keep cooking and cleaning and working and driving my car. Who does that? We don't do that. Okay? Vegan. And we don't follow this opinion that Rabbi Ben Sion Abba Shaul told us that if it's after 13 and a half minutes, we automatically say, okay, we could do the Mila on Shabbat because he tells you what? He goes, let's be practical because until 27 minutes, okay, after sunset, okay, here in Israel, our eyes see because we're not blind. He goes, we see, we look outside, God gave us different senses, sight and smell and touch and feel and whatever it may be, but then with our sight, we see, we do not see any stars, okay, until between 25 to 28 minutes after sunset, and most of the years, it's just 27 minutes. Therefore, the 13 and a half minute that we know from the Gemara, and then he adds, he goes, really, the Gemara did not tell us 13 and a half minutes. The Gemara talks about shalosh meal, three quarters of a meal, a distance that we travel. Okay, it never dealt with the concept of minutes. Goes, Maybe the way they judged sunset was different. Maybe the way they judged the stars coming out was different. But no matter what it is, we have to be realistic. We know what sunset looks like. We know what stars look like. And in actuality, it's 27 minutes here in Eris Israel, he's telling you. And that's it. There's nothing to, to discuss at that point. Once you know it's this amount of time, that 27 minute window, if a child is born then, the Mila cannot happen at that point. On Shabbat, it would have to be pushed off to sunset. So if the child is born before sun, sunset, the Mila is on Friday. In that 27 minute window, it would be Sunday. And if it's after the 27 minute window, it would be on Shabbat itself. Clear. So again, he's he's indicating once again that we have to use reality. We cannot just say the Hachamim said this or the Geonim said this or Rabbi Otam said this or somebody else said this. If it doesn't work with reality, it doesn't work. And as we said in the previous classes, that even though we have these opinions of 13 and a half minutes and 18 minutes and 20 minutes and 22 minutes, because until you actually see the stars, nothing has happened. He goes, so for a Saturday night, we say Shabbat ends 35, excuse me, 35 minutes or 40 minutes or 42 minutes or 50 minutes or whatever it is. You have to know when the stars come out. Once the stars are out, that's when it is. And that's what they used to do before they had calendars 
for people to tell that Shabbat is over. They would go, and I remember as a kid, we'd go stand outside, we'd look for the stars. Okay, the stars are out, and then you go back inside and tell everybody they could light the cigarettes. That's what that's the way it worked. Because we don't even need to bring Rabbi Utam into the equation because we have in the Gemara itself, this is a, a controversy between Rabbi Yose and Rabbi Yehuda, as we saw in the previous classes. Okay. 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 Come to me, Mikdash Hodesh. This will skip this because it has nothing to do with us, and we move on to section four. Now, this is when Rabbi Shalush is going to have fun with the next. In this section four, he's going to break it up now into four different points. Number one: somebody that is born up to thirteen and a half minutes after the sunset. Okay, is it Safek Yom Safek Laila? And he deals with all the sefekot, and he tells you the reef and the rosh. Told you the pasak be yohana, yohana has the hakri be huda. The layet ina eliba demand pasak. Ikaraba, ikarab yosef, the abdina, the humra, the surahu. Madame Melo Pascula, Kelbe Otopelaga, didn't care, Mishum de Vesa fix if a car. Constantly, when you have a suffix, you have to look at the different suffix, what are the different doubts, and see how you can put them together to make a constructive halacha. Whether it's two thirds of a meal is Benishim Ashot, Heve Benishim Ashot, who Safik Yom. Veno Mamishum, there are Babri Biosef and Laha Karaba. There are Benu Yona, Saba, the Hechash Nehal Kumi Pieshimua, and Kelaze, Meta Ahmad, Mr. Bear, who be Biu Harosh, Behre Ashens, this affix if a cash, a Kusafik had. Because there's no double suffix, that's the problem. You have to determine once and for all if it's Yom or Laila. He goes, both sefeqot, he brings it really one sefeq, he's just wording them differently to make you think there's two sefeqot, but actually one sefeq. Clear. Basically, he's trying to clarify the lashon, clarify the language used by the various hachamim as to how to look at a question so they, they themselves don't confuse you or confuse themselves. Point two. 13 and a half minutes. This is only one sefik. And he would be have the mila on the ninth day. It's difficult. Because even on, if we continue for that period of time of 13 and a half up to 27 minutes, as we stated, it's still safik. We're still in doubt. We have the safik of Rabbin Tam. Or the way Rabbi Nutam is understood that this is still Yom, even though it's after sunset. Or we're following the opinion of the Geonim, the up to three quarters of a meal, the time it takes to walk a meal after 
sunset, in other words, 13 and a half minutes, we've been a Shemashot. Safek halacha kehagera. Maybe the halacha is like the gera. They go on to be the Yahum Mevilna. Shehemil, who 22 behesed akot. Maybe the meal, according to the calculations of the Gaon Mevilna, is 22 and a half minutes. And if we're looking at now 22 and a half, and we're doing 75% of that, we're looking at about 16 and three quarters of a minute, right? Here, it tells you right now. Huben Shod, Achia Abu, 16.8 Dakot. So you need 16.8 minutes. Okahan Ambam. Kontan Ambam, the meal is 24 minutes. Okay? And therefore, Shiloshara Bari meal, three quarters of a meal, becomes 18 minutes. Be Yimoda Shimini. So according to each one of these Hachamim, one minute of when this child is born can affect according to different hachamim, whether it is Yom, whether it is Laila, whether it's Shabbat, whether it's Safik. Okay. Point three. So now we'll go back to the last point that we brought, that 27 is the magic number, it seems. So see what he says now. I don't know who made up this 27. Who said that it's 27 minutes or 25 to 28 and not 13 and a half? If you look at the Gemara, the Gemara is clear that Rabbi Yohanan ruled like Rabbi Huda for Shabbat, the Humrah to be stringent. Ubdat Rabbi Huda nehelku Rabba verab Yosef b'shem Shimuel. And then, regarding the opinion of Rabbi Huda, they had a mahlukit in the Gemara between Rabba, or rather Rabba and Rabbi Yosef, in the name of Shimuel. If the time of Ben Hashem Ashot is three quarters of a meal, or two thirds of a meal, and the Reef and the Rosh. Okay, ruled the Humra stringently like Rabba. Meaning what? Kalomar. Kalomar, Zeman bin Shemashot. Mishkiata Agula, who shall share every meal. The bin Shemashot time is when the sun, okay, the round circle of the sun descends is three, to, three quarters of a meal. Okushmoil, and like Shemuel. Shilosha Kochavim Laila, okay, the three stars of the night. Mashma. Listen again. Three stars are night. It's understood. The opinion of all of them. Three quarters of a meal. After sunset, okay, which we said could be either 13 and a half minutes or 18 minutes or 16.8 minutes, okay, and three medium sized stars that come out, who's a man ahad? It's one time, it's two different ways of saying the same time period. Either way, it's a way to look at Ben Hashem Ashot at uh, the ending of Ben Hashem Ashot and the beginning of Paddai Laila. And we know, as we saw, that how to calculate into minutes the time that it takes to, to, to traverse this meal, okay, is a point of contention among the poskim. According to the Rambam and the okay, and the Geonim. Okay, so the most 
or the lengthiest rather time of an entire meal, the time it would take to walk a meal, okay, which is similar to a mile, but it's slightly different, would be 24 minutes. So according to Harambam, that a meal would take 24 minutes to walk, three quarters of a meal would take 18 minutes to walk. And then Abiyose says, and we saw the Gemara last time, that you still have to add a little bit more, the amount it would take for you to walk in the time that you blink your eye. Whereas, and at that point, it is definitely nighttime according to all opinions. Shmuel said three stars is night. Didn't come to argue with the opinion of Rabbi Yohanan. He came to say this because the amount it takes a person to walk is not the same for all people. Some people walk quicker, some people walk slower. And at that time, they didn't have clocks, they didn't have watches. Amar Shimuel, Siman Shehu Nirelekol, Shelosha Kochabim Benunim. So let me give you a sign to know when is that time, because everybody doesn't walk the same, and nobody has a watch because it doesn't exist. When you see the three stars, you know time's up. But nowadays that we have very precise timepieces, 18 dakot, ahar shikiat agulat hashemish kula meha'ofat ve'ad ve'od kehelef ayin because nowadays we could say that 18 minutes plus a drop, okay, after sunset is the time that the stars come out. So from what Ham David Shilush is telling us over here, Okay, he disagrees with the approach taken by Rabbi Ben Sion Abashaul that we have to follow this minhag of 27 minutes if that's when we see the stars. Because, no, the wording of the Hachamim of the Gemara and the Rishonim and the Geonim who figured it out, we could take the most stringent opinion of the meal being 24, three quarters being 18, and now we you know 18 and a drop is definitely this time period of. Three stars. He goes, what bigger mistake can you have to go outside and tell me you see stars or don't see stars when the issue of stars by Shemuel is not what was laid down in the law. He goes, tell, listen again. He goes, There's no greater mistake to determine and establish based upon what we see. What is the time frame for medium stars? That was the intention of the Hachamim of the Mishnah. So the three star came from the Hachamim of the Mishnah. Where was the Mishnah written? Mishnah was written in Eris Israel. Shehayu Be'er Israel. Ushmuel, and Shemuel is in the Gemara. Where was the Gemara? In Babel, in Iraq, in, in Babylonia. Ushmuel Shehayu Be'er, Be'er Debrahim. And over there he, he explained the opinion and the wording of the Hachamim of the Mishnah. Upashutu. He goes, bottom line is this time period that it takes to walk three quarters of a meal from the end of the shikia 
This is what determines the night and not our sense of sight. So basically, he pushes away everything that we saw until now. So he's telling you, go to 18 minutes, 24 minutes, and you know that, those are your time frames. 24 minutes for the meal, three quarters is 18, you're done. Mashgatab. so even though there are different issues of halakha as to how we calculate the Ben Hashem Ashot or how we use the Ben Hashot, the ben Hashem Ashot when we're dealing with the issue of Safek Yom Safek Lada for a Nyan of Hilul Shabbat and we're unsure, we don't always look at it the same way as we look at this Ben Hashem Ashot period for other Halachot. Okay, especially when it comes to Kiddush HaChodesh, when it's time to determine if it's a Rosh Chodesh and we have to sanctify the moon, things work differently over there, especially. Because, but over here, we have to be very, very clear as to whether it's day or night to know whether we can do the Mila on Shabbat or not. Now, he brings us Maharin Abon. Maharin Abon was the rabbi of the Hida. Okay, and he wrote a very, very famous book about Gitin about divorce contracts. And he writes, Somebody who wants to be like Rabbi Utam, but definitely never go against the minhag, the accepted practice. He goes, and especially when it comes to a case like this of a child being born on Friday night after sunset, that it's still definitely not night time. You cannot follow the opinion of Ben Hashem Ashot, of what do you call the Ben Hashem Ashot of Rabbi Utam, rather. Rather, we push over the Mila to Sunday. We do not look at it as definitely daytime like Rabbi Utam to do the Mila on Friday. Now what about Saturday night? The child is born Saturday night. Okay? And it's after sunset, but it's not past 72 minutes. Okay, so somebody who follows Rabbin Utam for 72 minutes for ending Shabbat will now think, well, technically it's still Shabbat, and now I have to have my child's Mila on Shabbat itself. The Hacham here, Maharina Abon, is telling you no, absolutely not, because according to the accepted practice, the Minhag, it is no longer Shabbat, and therefore the Mila has to be on Sunday, it has to be the next day. Okay, so never you, you could use Rabbi Tam 
for yourself as a personal thing to be mahmir to end Shabbat or Kippur or whatever it is later, okay, as far as milakha is concerned. But it is never used the opposite way to determine that because I'm following Rabbeinu Tam t- time, it is still daytime and not nighttime. Keep that in mind. Very, very key point. And people do get confused with that. And they what if a guy follows it all his life? He, he doesn't no. know anything but it. Right, but that's the problem. He's going against the accepted practice. But for him, he's the rob. He, he no, counts. no, he's never the rob. Since he's a baby, in, he in follows indiv- the Ben An individual never person can never trump the practice of the world, can never trump the practice of the community. Absolutely not. As far as halakha is concerned, as far as all the Tanaim and the Amuraim, those are the rabbis that wrote the Mishnah and the Gemara, they determined for us the halakha from their time and from which existed before them, and it's la'ulam va'id. It doesn't change. It's eternal. And if somebody comes and says, though those hachamim, they're all wrong, I know better. I'm telling you, I'm waiting for Shabbat to end Rabbinu Tam time, and I'm doing Rabbinu Tam time now, according to Sha'ud Zimaniyot, and in the summer that works out to 97 minutes sometimes after sunset. Okay? While well, everybody else is driving around and what do you call it, and lighting up their cigarettes, for example. According to Halakha, the people are right, and he's just being Mahmir for himself just to extend Shabbat. But if his child was born at 37 minutes after he sunset, even though he is still following Shabbat, the kid's Mila is not going to be on Shabbat the following week because he thinks that's still Shabbat that's warped. The Mila becomes Sunday. The child is considered to be born on Sunday according to Halakha, and the Mila is on Sunday. The Halakha overrides a person's personal practice, if you will. Okay? That's a very, very important point, and because people have come to grasp different humrot, they have lost touch with reality. They've lost touch with practical halakha, and they are creating a new halakha that unfortunately, because of a situation like this, can actually be a person, make a person be mehalil shabbat. It's a big problem. Okay, so we continue now. Okay, and he also brings the words of the Gidat Veladim, which was one of the biggest rabbis in Cairo, and he reiterates this. The world. Okay, means Sefaradim, Ashkenazim, everybody, the Hida traveled the entire Jewish world. Okay, and he was well respected in his day and until today. The practice of the entire Jewish world is like the reasoning of the Geonim. And Mosei Shabbat. After a time period of two thirds of a meal, madlikin they already turn on fire. Umahar al bah yehes dat geonim laharif varambam veharosh udbreh al nagid bin Abraham bin Harambam sebarazo and mahar al bah. Okay, Rabbi Levi bin Hayim. Okay, he attributed this opinion of the geonim already to the reef. And to the Rambam, and to the Rosh. These are Shilosha Amudeh Hora'a. These are the three pillars of ruling according to Shuhan Aruch. And according to the words of the Nagid, Rabbi Abraham and Harambam. Harambam had one son only, Rabbi Abraham, who was known as Rabbi Abraham and Nagid. And he wrote us also said the same thing. He goes, this is the accepted practice among all the hachamim. And even if 
we think that there is room for a mahluket over here and for another voice and another opinion and another view. Talk about it from now till tomorrow. But bottom line, in we have no authority whatsoever to annul this practice. Okay? It's a very, very strong statement. It's another book by uh, bin Danan. He writes also about this issue. Okay, child was born, Arab Shabbat, quarter of an hour, 15 minutes, in other words, after the Maghrib, after sunset. In other words, three quarters of a meal or 13 and a half minutes. Okay, so he's talking about this practice so who was one of the great Deganim in Morocco he had a question brought to him child was born now 15 minutes after sunset what is the halakha when are we doing his milah and he said clearly if the child was born before sunset the milah would have been on Friday okay if he's born within the period of 13 and a half minutes, then it becomes safik, and we have to push off the milah till Sunday. Because we do not consider the opinion of Rabbeinu Tam whatsoever, okay, because that does not come into play because we know when is night and when is not night. But since this child was born 15 minutes later, that's already past 13 and a half minutes, that tells me then it's Vadai Laila, it's definitely night, and therefore, it is now Shabbat, according to all opinions. And therefore, the Milah is on Shabbat. And this is the opinion of the Geonim. And that's our Minhag. And that is the Minhag of Eris Israel. Rabbi Shalush now comes to conclude the Teshuvah. He tells you, Le Maskana. Bottom line. What is the Halakha? What is the Deen? Kevan. Shada'at Harambam. Vehari. Veharosh. He had Nechona. Vehayeshara. Since the knowledge, the ruling, the mindset of Rambam, Reef, Rosh, these three, again, never forget Rambam, Reef, and Rosh. It is the correct one. And it's the straight path. In understanding those sections of the Gemara that deal with these issues. Like I have proven, and since the entire Jewish world relies upon these and they actually follow their rulings and practice like them, that is three quarters of a meal. Mesofa Shikia from the end of the Shikia. Shuhu Shimona Esreda Kot, which is now 18 minutes. Ukde Mokah Pesahim, and is proved in Gamalama Gima, Sekh Pesahim. Me Shinolad Me Shikia Ad Shimona Esreda Kot, who been a Shemashot, Limoni Moba Shimini. Somebody is born in that 18 minute window. Okay, it's considered. And he would not have his mila on the Shemini, on the eighth day. And the mila gets pushed off, like explained and clarified in the Mishnah, Shabbat. Okay, and this is the way to put the halakha into practice both on Friday night as well as Saturday night as per the deen, Medina. 
and according to the time and the need. Rabbi Yehoshua Amaman, Rabbi Yehoshua Amaman, one of the great, one of the great uh, Moroccan rabbis of this generation who lived in Israel. Okay, he wrote many teshuvot. This is he says in Hedek Aleph or Hayim Siman Mim Gimel. Here, okay, Ubn the Moshe Shabbat, Ra'ui Lahmir Karabinu Tam. So Rabbi Yehoshua Amaman is telling you that on Moshe Shabbat is worthy to be stringent like Rabbinu Tam. Rabbi Shilush tells you. No, we do not see his ways. We do not see his words. His words are not clear to us. And we should not deviate from the practice. From the minhad of our forefathers. That they were not concerned with the opinion of Rabbi Utam. Like Rabbi Mushal Ashkar wrote. And why are we not concerned with the opinion of Rabbi Utam? Because if we become concerned with Rabbi Utam, we end up making a mockery of all our fathers and forefathers and hachamim and rabbanim and all our leaders that preceded us because we think we know better and we're going to do a different thing than they did. We make a mockery of the Torah that they gave us. And this is not similar, like those people who don't understand the Gemara, to think the thinking of what Rabbi Hanan says that we Abdinan the Humra, we practice a stringency like the Bihuda and like the Bihuda, the Hamim of the Mishnah. And this is not the place for this. Now, what do we actually do? He's telling you, just to clarify for you. And you're going to tell me, well, Rabbi, what do you mean? We don't end Shabbat early. We at 18 minutes, like you're telling us. We end Shabbat and Kippur 40 minutes after sunset. He goes, yes, of course we do. Why? Mishum tosefet kodesh because of the deen of Tosef, there is a deen of adding from the hall to the Kodesh, not to take the Shabbat and just end it abruptly, okay, and say, we're sick of you, Shabbat, we don't want to end, we just want to end you, just to add some of the hall, take some of the secular, the mundane, the regular work week, and give it a little kiddusha, okay, so we add a few minutes, 20 minutes in this case, and this is the ruling of Rabbi Shilush. So Rabbi Shilush is very, very clear as to when the stars come out, when is Ben Hashem Ashot, when Shabbat is over, and the approach of all our hachamim to the mindset and the opinion that is practiced or that is uh, technically accepted. Nowadays, as the opinion of Rabbin Utam, even though we've shown before that that is not really the opinion of Rabbin Utam. Anybody, anything? Joey Shabbat this week is 4.35, right? <laughs> Let's take a look. Roughly, let's say it's 4.35. I, I, I don't do roughly. We'll tell you exactly. Okay. Let's so, say it's 4.35. Friday, Shiki'a. Sunset is 4.39. 4.39. 4.39 is sunset. The G gives birth 4.40. 4.40. Is Safir. the birth on Saturday? No. Sunday. I didn't understand why you gave it the extra day, but... So... I don't want to go back to an hour ago. No, you, no, you, very simple. You, you gave it the extra day. Well, I let's really look at this. Let, let's say that. like this. Let's make it easy numbers. Let's say sunset is at 5 p.m. Okay. From 5 p.m., we're starting Shabbat. We're not doing any, any melacha because we're saying now it is Shabbat. Sunset has come, right? But now a child is born, 5.06. Obviously, it's not Friday anymore. So the Minah cannot be Friday. 
But we, the Hachamim established a period of time called Ben Hashem Ashot, okay, which is either Shelosha Rebe'e Mil, three quarters of a meal, the amount of time it takes to walk three quarters of a mile, think of it like that, or a period of time called Ad Shiro'im Shelosha Kuchavim Benunim, period of time until we see three medium-sized stars. Until that point happens, the walking of the three quarters of a mile or the seeing the three medium stars, until that point, it is not yet definitely night. So we're in this twilight. If somebody is born in that twilight period, which we're going to say right now, according to the ruling of Rabbi Shalush that we just read, is now... 18 minutes, okay? So any child born between 5 o'clock and 5.18 is definitely not daytime, but it's, def but it's not nighttime yet either. So the child cannot have a mila on Shabbat, even though we're following Shabbat, as far as this halakha is concerned, it's not Shabbat for that child. For us to be mahalil Shabbat for him the, next, the following Shabbat, automatically his milah gets pushed off to Sunday. If that child is born at 519, it's Shabbat, the milah is on Shabbat. And if he's born 430 and Shabbat's 439, it's Friday? Yeah, absolutely. Any, if the child is born any time prior to sunset, the Mila is on that regular day. At the Halakha. The 439, 440 is a Chidush. Okay, uh, so you learned something. Yeah. Good. Okay, time for a baby. Hi. <laughs> Grandkids, inshallah. I'm in. Yeah, Joe. Mm. I'm listening. Who was calling me? Every no. I hear you now, Joe. Yeah. I hear you. If it's let's say it's on a Monday night or Tuesday night, five in that in the Ben Hashem short time, so it's on. It's it's that day, right? We don't push it off. When we're dealing with a weekday, we don't have any issue because it's not an issue of being mehalil Shabbat, so it's not a problem. So let's say it's Monday night after sunset. That's automatically considered Tuesday. Okay, and so Mila would be on Tuesday. There's no question over here because you're not being mehalil Tuesday. You can't be, there's nothing to be mehalil. You understand? The mila is something that is, do, there's a halakha, mila dohayat a Shabbat. The mila pushes off the Shabbat. In other words, it's something that technically would be a sur to do on Shabbat, but it has a specific time. And if it lands for, on Shabbat, then we do it on Shabbat. But if it's not, 100% clear that it's Shabbat, then we have to push it off. When we're dealing with a weekday, we're not concerned because there's nothing to push off or not push off. You can be mehalil a weekday. So, because the weekday is a hole, you can be mehalil hole. It's the same hal. Okay. So, automatically, the mila would be on whatever day it was. Anytime after, prior to sunset, it's that day. After sunset, it's the next day. We're good. Very well. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Joey, good night. Thank good you. Night. My pleasure. Thank you for joining. I loved it. Take care. I'm glad. We'll See do well. more. See you in Shul tomorrow. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I saw you Saturday. Saturday? Let's see. Okay. Inshallah, things will Take be good. Care. Thank good you. Good night, everybody. Good night.